Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. Today I want to talk about some beauty mistakes that I used to make. These are going to be a lot of skincare, some makeup as well. Things that I look back on and I'm like, oh, I should not have done that or I should have done that a little bit differently. And I think it's really fun to kind of reflect back. And with makeup and with skincare, it's definitely a journey. And every year we learn more things. And sometimes you just look back and you're like, Mm, that was kind of a mistake. So like I said, I do feel like I have more skincare related topics in this video to discuss. I do have some makeup as well, but recently I've really fallen in love with skincare and throughout 2019 I've been trying to just educate myself more when it comes to my skin and how to properly care for it. And through that, I've learned a lot of things that I was kind of doing wrong and I thought it'd be fun to share in this video. I think the main thing for me, I love the channel mixed makeup and if you guys aren't subscribed I'm gonna leave it down below Susan Yara is like the star on that channel and she does a lot of skincare reaction videos where she will react to different celebrities makeup or not makeup excuse me skincare routines and I just find them so fascinating to watch. I will always like turn one of hers on when I'm doing my skincare at nighttime and she will watch people do things. She'll be like, nope, you probably don't want to do it like that. And a lot of them are things that I do and I've kind of adapted my technique based on that. Plus so many other resources here on YouTube. I'm actually going to leave quite a few linked down below. My other favorite skincare type channels, of course, Dr. Dre. I recently discovered Hiram. So I'm going to leave some resources down below if you find this stuff as interesting as I do. I've kind of fallen down the rabbit hole and I'm pretty obsessed with skincare right now. So that's part of the reason I thought this video would be so much fun. So why don't we go ahead and hop into it? Okay, the first mistake for me, this one is both skincare and makeup related, and I've definitely become more aware of this, thank you to Susan Yara, and that's chugging on my skin. So, you know, I am in my mid-20s, so I'm at a place where my skin is maybe a little bit more forgiving and I'm not noticing the long-term effects of this right now, but... I've kind of started to become more conscious of the tugging that I do on my skin, especially around my eyes. And I know a lot of us are guilty of this. So you know I don't use makeup remover wipes anymore. I've mentioned that a while ago, but especially when I used those, those, oh my gosh, you tug so much. But I can still be really bad about like rubbing my eyes if they itch and I don't have makeup on. Or if I'm trying to get makeup off and I have... Like I've maybe put some oil around my eyes to remove the eye makeup and I'll take a washcloth or something of that sense. And I used to like really tug and pull at my eye and I've tried to be more gentle. I'm like, you know, I might need to spend more time removing this, but in the long run, I'm going to thank myself for being more gentle with my skin, especially that sensitive skin around the eyes. But it's something I've really trickled into my makeup routine as well. And this is something I have especially noticed being on YouTube because I watch videos of myself applying my makeup. And primer, I am so bad about you guys. I will put my primer on and I'm just like tugging at my skin, like pulling the primer up. And you know, sometimes it comes down to formula because some primers are just more smooth and easily blended onto the skin and some take some working, but I really tried to adapt my technique so that I'm not tugging at my skin because that's a huge mistake that I was making that I know if I didn't make this change, I was gonna really be mad at myself down the road. Now let's talk about a makeup one. I have drier skin, but as I've said before, I used to have very oily skin. So it's kind of been a journey for me learning how to care for my dry skin and how to apply makeup on it because some techniques or products that I used to be a fan of previously just don't work with my skin type anymore. And the one thing that I really learned recently is that I don't always need as much powder as I think I do. And on camera, sometimes I like to apply more powder because that is what resonates well over the camera with the lights and whatnot but in real life I will like look at my skin up close and I'm like you know what I look powdery and I've come to realize that I don't need to set down everything and I used to feel like I did if I had any sort of cream it had to be set down but over the past probably year or so I really started to evolve into not setting my makeup as much and keep in mind formulas vary and some products really almost require being set down but some you can work with and you don't necessarily need to apply a powder over top and I've started to realize that that is what benefits my skin. 
the thing with powders is I would apply them initially and I'm like, this looks good. My skin looks smooth. I like it. But it would be like eight hours later, which when I had oily skin eight hours later, I would have some shine coming through. But now with my skin type, if I apply a powder eight hours later, like the life has been sucked out of my skin and it just looks so cakey and dry and heavy. And I really kind of started to get away from that. That being said, I still use powders. There are still some products in my collection that I find pair well with powders, but I've kind of started to think it through a little bit more. And especially, you know, my favorite combo right now, these two, this is my Undone on Foundation, my Ultra Repair Tinted Moisturizer. When I'm wearing these, I don't need to set it down. Maybe set like my under eyes, my smile lines, anywhere that would crease, but doing a full set is something that I've started to move away from. The next mistake is also skincare related and you know 2019 has been the sunscreen revelation for me and now I am just obsessed with sunscreen. I will reapply throughout the day. It's something that I've really learned the importance of and I've always been a sunscreen person for days that I'm out in the sun but it wasn't necessarily an integral part of my everyday routine like it has become and a mistake I used to make and something that I used to kind of be oblivious to is that makeup products, whether it's a primer, a foundation, a setting powder, a setting spray, makeup products that have SPF in them are not enough on their own. And that was the mistake I used to make. I'd be like, well, you know, I'm using this CoverGirl foundation today. It has SPF 20 in it. So I mean, I'm wearing sunscreen. And here's the thing. Yes, you are wearing sunscreen, but the amount of product that you're wearing is not giving you the coverage that you need or the protection that you need. So I have become a fan of just wearing an everyday sunscreen. And then, you know, if my products have SPF in them, that's a bonus. I feel even more protected that way. But I've started to realize that I can't just get by with a setting spray that has SPF in it. I need to use a dedicated product for that in my routine. And I know that I'm not alone with that because I will talk to my girlfriends and I will ask them like, do you wear sunscreen every day? And they're like, yeah, my foundation has sunscreen in it. And I'm like, well, let's chat. <laughs> so that's a mistake that I was making and it's something that I've made a big change in in 2019. And don't get me wrong, I still like when products has, have SPF in them, but I like that as like my second layer. All right, kind of a makeup technique that I realized was kind of a mistake the way I was applying it. It was not flattering to my face shape. I used to take my concealer and I would do my concealer triangles, you know, but I would really kind of draw it out to here because I thought that was what was gonna kind of lift that cheekbone. And don't get me wrong, I do think that it can kind of help, especially if you are doing some more makeup in here with contour, blush, highlight. It can really help emphasize that lifted look, but I have more of a round face, okay? I don't have like an incredibly round face, but I have a small head and it's a little bit rounder. And I don't mean round as in like chubby or anything like that. I just mean the shape of it. And when I apply my concealer like that, it really emphasizes it. It makes my face look much rounder than it is. And I was starting to see myself in photos and I was like, like, I was like, okay, my face is kind of round, you know, around my chin. I'm kind of like a kind of square, kind of rounded off, you know. I have a wider face. But in photos, I was like, I look like my face is a straight up circle. It looks so round. And I realized it's because I was drawing my face outward because as I was pulling the concealer outwards, I'm pulling my face outwards. So what I realized is if I want to use contour, or not contour, but um, concealer, to help contour my face and to help sculpt it, I am better off kind of dragging it down, like taking that lighter shade down lower because that's what's going to elongate my face. So I've had to adapt that technique a little bit and that was definitely a mistake I was making that was not doing any favors for my face shape. The last one is back to skincare and for a long time there I would use just an oil as the last step in my routine and I thought that that counted as my moisturizer. And don't get me wrong, oils can have moisturizing properties. Also, not all oils are created equally. Some are definitely better. But for me, especially as someone with dry skin, I was kind of doing myself a disservice to just try to moisturize with an oil because that's gonna kind of soften up that top layer of skin but it's really not going to penetrate the skin the way something like 
a product with hyaluronic acid in it. So for me, I've had to go back to using more traditional moisturizers, but then maybe top it off with an oil. If I want to kind of seal it in an extra layer, I still love facial oils in my routine, but I realized that I was kind of making a mistake by just using an oil and expecting that to be enough hydration for my skin type. So now oils are kind of an extra for me or something that I'll use to mix in with something else, but it's not my only hydrator on my face because it's just not going to penetrate deep enough. So those were a few makeup and skincare mistakes that I look back and I'm like, oh, if only then I knew what I know now. So hope you guys enjoyed this. I want to hear down below. What are your makeup or skincare or hair or body care, whatever it may be? What are some mistakes that you look back at and you're like, oh, what was I thinking? I would love to hear down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will go ahead and see you in my next video. Bye.